Hello and welcome to another episode of the Duelist Community Movie Review Series. I am constantly questioning the fabric of my reality and rarely settling upon the idea that I know what the fuck is going on. And I think through that, I don't know, acceptance of the uncertainty of everything that's happening around me, I've uh, discovered a, a depth and a uh, just constant curiosity that's very enjoyable once you get used to it. And I am just possibly part of a mentality that has been so ubiquitous in my life, so all-encompassing that I don't recognize I'm a part of that mentality and perpetuating that mentality. But that mentality, in fact, is meant to continue to perpetuate your perception that you are not everything. And so I am unwittingly participating in a show to keep you from understanding and recognizing that you're God and it's your show. You're the cause of this mentality as well as the figure that the mentality is keeping from freedom. Just possibly. And on that note, this movie review episode is about The Truman Show, which came out in 1998 and stars Jim Carrey, Laura Linney, and Ed Harris. And I am very excited. This is our second Jim Carrey movie review. Uh, if we get a third, just like with Bill Murray, he gets a coffee. This movie is fantastic. And what I love about this movie is that it works on a couple of different levels. When I first watched this movie back in 1998, it was very much symbolic of how the system is keeping us asleep to our freedom, that the system is manipulating us, that the system is using us to perpetuate itself, to make a profit off of us. And that's very much what I got out of this movie. This time around, not only is that in there, but you start to recognize that the system itself is really just the function of our collective mentality, of our collective ego. And that the movie is actually about you waking up to what you really are. And we are all a part of that process of you waking up. And so before I say any more, because that's again, two of the things that I got out of the movie going this time around, I'm going to pass it on to Andrew and hear his initial reaction. Yeah, so as, as always, Watch the movie if you haven't yet. Before you go any further into this episode, there will be shitloads of spoilers, as always, in these movie review series. But I'm sure um, this is this is a movie that's been watched by quite a few people already. Um, so a lot of you probably won't have to dig into it. But yeah, for me, um, the biggest takeaway, I think, was the symbolism from because I, I, I've i seen this before, but I haven't in a long time, probably a good eight years or so. Um, so in a much different mentality right now, but I think the, uh, the symbolism and, and what I think a lot of people might miss is I was seeing it as, so the Truman show is like exists sort of within our society. And, and we see society as like the real world. And then the Truman show as this sort of fake curated thing where he's able to be very easily manipulated by opinions of friends, family, whatever, and and morphed into this sort of thing that they wanted him to be. And we, we'll definitely get into the manipulation aspect because um, that I found to be very interesting. But the way I see it is that people think that this society that we're in you know, is, is the real world. And there's like something beyond, significantly beyond that that a lot of people don't necessarily recognize. And so beyond society is, is reality, but that's not something that can be controlled or curated or is necessarily controlling society, but because of our priorities and where we sit and where we lie with our, you know, priority and comfort specifically, we are able to be manipulate and sort of settle upon the idea that society is reality. Things are just the way they are. This is how things are. What do you mean they could be different? No, this is this is just fine the way things are. And so there's there's something beyond where we've settled right now. And and I think very much to a degree, we're experiencing a Truman show like reality 
right now because we have settled upon what we believe to be true. And one of I'm just going to get this quote out there because this one hit me the hardest from the movie when Kristoff said, we accept the reality of the world with which we're presented. And I think that if if for nothing else, that was probably the biggest takeaway that I got. And that's just our resistance to the desire to question what's going on around us. Um, and through that questioning, we can let go of, of the reality with which we're presented and maybe more clearly recognize that we are that reality. And as we change, so does that reality. And that's really the thing about this movie is that they repeatedly show that it's a prison, regardless of how comfortable it is, regardless of how they work to make sure he is happy, that he is comfortable and he is a willing participant. It is a prison. And that is very much the ego. It's very much the ego. And it's very different from real life. When you're thinking about yourself, everything is colored by that perception of yourself. Everything is colored and distorted by your fears and everything that you're trying to be. The carrot and the stick mentality changes your experience of the real world. And so it becomes your prison. And it's almost preferable though. And I love this about the beginning of the movie where they were talking to the actors about being a part of the Truman Show. And the actors treated it almost like a religion very much like we do in our culture right now, like the ego is the one worldwide religion that we are all very much worshiping at the altar of. And so Laura Lenny's character was saying that it's like a blessing, like they're doing something noble in participating in this charade. And one person actually said, you know, it's all true. It's just controlled. And that's exactly the ego. The ego is like, no, 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 no. What you're experiencing, it's all true. But it's the result of your control which means it's not, it's just true to you. It's not actually reality because you're not allowing yourself to be in reality. You're too busy controlling a fictional little bubble. And so I thought it was really interesting because the entire story is about how desperately that mentality really works to keep us involved and invested and how much it takes to break free of it. Yeah, and it's a fictional bubble that can't be controlled as much as we try to control it. And that's really where all of our suffering stems from is the desire to control that bubble when it's an impossible thing to control. So our striving to control it and lack of ability to do so is where all the distortion and suffering comes from, at least the psychological suffering is from that desire. But so so we think that it's something that we can control. And so we're existing within this illusion of believing that this reality can be what we want it to be, as opposed to letting go of why we want it to be that. Because that desire for it to be the, the way that we want it to be is from insecurity, is from our inability to see the reality of what we are. Like we're caught in this in this loop in this vicious cycle of trying to soothe our fear with the thing that's creating it constantly, the desire for control in an uncontrollable reality. And so the only way out is to let go of that desire, is to let go of that idea that that it can be something that could possibly be controlled. I know this is like, I mean, it's, it's related to Truman Show, obviously, because it's like all talking about society, but it's not a specific scene necessarily. But I think that's... Uh, that's one of the biggest things that I got out of it, as you as you said, that as much as it was, you know, this this curated thing. And Christoph even says, you know, there's nothing out there for you, Truman. There, there's nothing better out there. The society that I've created for you has no no more or, or significantly less disease and and awful aspects of our society that we exist within. But even despite that, no matter how comfortable it could be, it was still something he needed to be break free of. And he would rather exist in a in an actually uncertain reality than one that is just comfortable. And so that that comfort eventually runs dry for us. And it's like the story of the idea if you were to create 
a reality, you would end up right in the spot that you are right now with the exact amount of uncertainty, with the amount of things, with the exact amount of an inability to control it. And so it really comes full circle to that. It's just that very few of us recognize that we're always striving for more of the control rather than letting go of the things that are causing us to want it. And it's not freedom. Like no matter how much comfort we're offered, it's not the same as freedom. And deep down, we know that. We know the difference. And that's why comfort itself is never satisfying in the long term. That's why Truman wanted to leave. That's why he wanted to adventure. He had that adventurous spirit. And look at how much the ego or the town or Kristoff had to do to try and stamp that down. It's like, I want to be an adventurer. Oh, everywhere's already been found, right? I'd like to go out on the water. Oh, your dad died, right? Like there was so much in terms of manipulation to convince Truman that he couldn't do the things that he wanted to do or be the person that he wanted to be. And all for the sake of security. And Kristoff, when he said that, and I really enjoyed that part where he's like, you know, there's nothing out there for you. You know, in here, it's so much safer. It's like, right, that might be true, but in here, it's not for me. Right? The world might be harder to deal with in reality, but at least it's on my terms. I'm not just, you know, running from the stick and chasing the carrot just so I can perpetuate this prison that ultimately benefits everybody else who is in their own type of prison. Given that freedom is really the motivating factor, and we're talking about freedom a lot on dualistic unity in terms of freedom of mentality. And Truman Show is very much freedom from, from the ego, freedom from the idea of safety and comfort and living in the little bubble. I love the fact that it's actually a bubble. <laughs> when you see it from the outside, it's just this big bubble that Truman lives with it. And that's very much like the ego. But what happens as we start to question our ego? We start to wake up to the world that we're actually a part of. And what I think is really funny, because in the movie, they make it seem like it's because of human error. Like the rain is a perfect example. When the rain just starts falling on him specifically based on how he's feeling and it's not raining anywhere else. And he's just like, that's really weird. And he tries moving and it follows him. And he has this moment of like, this is fucking cool, right? That, like moments like that, where all of a sudden, for no good reason, things seem to be exactly synchronous to what you're doing. Those become more and more obvious as you start getting out of who you think you are. As you start wanting to escape that bubble, you start recognizing that there's a whole world that you're actually a part of. And so you start to think, see things like synchronicities. And I'm specifically comparing this to the path of quote unquote, spiritual awakening or just egotistical awakening. But you start to recognize that you are the rest of the universe. And as those synchronicities pop up, you have to ask more and more questions because it just seems far too convenient that all of these things would just happen to be perfectly in line with these moments that you're having when you're in clarity and you're not looking for it to be in line, but it is. And so Truman's having these moments where it's like, well, that was weird. And then the moment with the radio and he gets right to the point where finally he's like, okay, I'm going to play with this. And he goes and he walks out in traffic just to see everybody's response and everything else. He starts actually questioning the bubble and they have to work so hard to make sure he stops doing that. They have to make so many rules. Can't go that way, Truman. Can't go that way, Truman. Oh, bus is going this way, Truman. All that stuff. Can't get on. It's so very interesting because that's exactly how we feel as we're trying to wake up, like everything's working against us at first. Yeah. And that process of letting go has its own reward as you go too, but you have to be willing to take that initial step into that uncertainty to start to recognize that. And I think that's what a lot of people shy away from is as things, you know, the idea of yourself, we, we're always having opportunities to question that constantly and we're constantly avoiding those opportunities. And so in all of the scenes that the things start to get a little strange for Truman, he has opportunities, you know, the, uh, the lights, the initial one, the lights fall from the, the top of the dome sees his dad who apparently has been dead for 20 years. The, the radio is saying his every move. Cause he taps into the people monitoring him when he goes in the elevator, he sees, Oh, it's not really an elevator. It's just a doorway into all of the director and producer managing everything like those opportunities are arising in our lives all the time. And yet, because we're clinging to 
false certainty because that's where we think our comfort is derived from. We ignore them or, or we experience cognitive dissonance where we're not willing to face them. We come up with a reason why it happened. Oh, that's just, that's just this. Oh, that's just, that's just that. It's like, oh, you know, and it, it's for anything, even with our conversation with Ben yesterday talking about just the absurdity of reality and how crazy and how cool everything is. But we're, we're always just like, oh, it's just, it's just that. Oh, it's it's just that. As opposed to questioning that, recognizing the absurdity, but also when things in our lives happen that do seem synchronous, having some curiosity about it instead of just ignoring it. Because as we begin to question it, things start to unravel and the, the things that we hold on to for that sense of certainty, like, like with Truman, he has a lot of things that he lives a very comfortable life, has a stable job, great wife, you know, great neighborhood, nice neighbors, everyone's friendly all the time. Like he is in the epitome of comfort. And yet when things start to seem a little bit strange to him, he, he initially, I think there's, there's hesitations. Absolutely. But it's hard once he starts to question it to not allow the rest to unravel. And I think a lot of us are just unwilling to take that first step. Like we we ignore the things as they're happening because it is very obvious that you're not what you think you are. Like science is starting to prove it more and more that everything is made out of the same shit and all of reality. And yet we still hold on to the idea of ourselves because we think that that certainty is what gives us the comfort. And it's just pure discomfort if we if we start to question that when it isn't like there there's initial discomfort through change. But eventually you recognize that everything's always uncertain all the time. And your idea that it isn't is actually what's causing that discomfort. So the opportunities are always there. And a lot of times we just run back to what we think is comfortable because I don't know, that's what we're used to. I guess. Well, and in all honesty, this system or our collective ego benefits from keeping us in a perpetual state of fear. So that way we can, we continue to cater to our need for security based on that fear. So it's always working against us, but we have moments where we have the opportunity to even have small, tiny awakenings and it's interesting because you mentioned all of those very obvious moments where almost anybody who wasn't raised in an environment where they were fooled and lied to their entire life would have went, what the fuck? Like with the, the light that fell from the sky that actually said serious on it. Like that was that that's that star that he's looking at serious, which is hilarious. But to him, that didn't make any sense at all, but it did trigger something. And it was the conversation he had with Sylvia when he was a teenager and it makes you wonder how important it is just just once to just shake someone and say something that they may not understand but that will stick and almost allow other insights to come later because sylvia actually said it's fake it's all for you the sky the sand everything and that couldn't have possibly made sense to truman at the age that he was given the reality that he was a part of and how he had grown up. But as he started to see those other little hints, like the traffic being on a perfect loop, the fact that the town basically seemed to work on a schedule around him, as was evidenced by the radio, all that stuff, all of a sudden it started to, to click. It started to become obvious that there was an actual illusion that was keeping him imprisoned. And then he pushed it and he pushed it and he pushed it finally getting out of town, crossing the bridge, going through the fire that whole bit and being chased by people in hazmat suits and whatnot. Like that's all really extreme just to keep him in the illusion. And at that point you can almost see like the temptation would have been to give up, to just surrender. And he made it look like he did until he could get what he needed to get out to decide to leave. And I think that's a big part of this in our lives, in our process, because the biggest part of this is recognizing that there is an illusion, that our mentality based on identity is in fact keeping us veiled from reality and disconnected from one another. It's not to escape it and run out to the mountains. 
It's not about living off grid necessarily because the rest of the world is still kicking along around you. But it is recognizing first and foremost that there is an illusion and that as in the Truman Show, there are a lot of people who are playing a part in that illusion. And they don't recognize that they're doing so, but they are being paid. And it's really important to recognize that, that their entire life perpetuating this illusion, depending on this illusion, believing in this illusion has a reward system. The better they do it, the more the system takes care of them. So it's very much like they're paid actors. Yeah, that's a fantastic point that as much as it seems like, oh, well, that's not really what's going on. It's like, yeah, it is. It actually is. But I really liked that part of things, the the shift from him kind of going berserk with, oh, my God, trying to get out, trying to escape to being like back in it, you know, back in it. And that's very symbolic. I saw of keeping your head down to a degree like you can recognize it without screaming it from the rooftops because those who are benefiting from the illusion are not going to like that very much. And so there is a strategy involved with this. And and I think that's what we saw with Truman very much. He, he recognized, OK, I'm not just going to be able to, you know, run my way out of here. I've, I've got to strategize this. A little bit. I got to seem like I'm playing the part and those, you know, in our reality, when, when we play the part, recognize it, but play the part, it's like you're, you're more sensitive to those who may get it. There's nothing wrong with dropping seeds. Obviously, right. I make tons of videos. We have a whole fucking podcast talking about it. We're dropping seeds left and right, but we're not screaming at people how they need to change and shift and, and all of that. And that's what I saw with, with Truman when he went, transitioned from trying to get out to playing the part to going back to just the loop just making it seem like doing everything because he knows that if he can get people back into believing that he's in the illusion so kind of flipping the illusion on them he can play that role and actually have more of an impact on things and i think that's something to to keep in mind as you start to wake up to the reality of not being what you think you are to, to be sensitive to that. I think that's something we saw um, coming out of the retreat a little bit. Like people, some people went fucking scorched earth on reality because it was like a lot of recognitions happen at our retreats and, you know, we go fucking deep as shit and, and to those caught in the illusion, it's not going to make much sense if you just start screaming it in their face. Cause they're, they're so far on the other end of the spectrum. It's not to say that they can't get closer, but to expect everyone to come to the other opposite end of the spectrum typically does more harm than good and just puts you in a really difficult situation. So I think you can learn a lot from, from what the way that Truman handled that recognition. Like he saw, oh my God, this is all, this is all fucked. Like I'm, I'm in, I don't he didn't recognize maybe that he was in a TV show, but he recognized the absurdity of everything that was happening and it all, how it was all revolving around him and everyone was in on this grand thing. So he did go back to playing the part and get everyone to believe that he did still think that or didn't recognize anything. And so I think we can all take a little bit of advice from, from Truman in that or, or learn something from him that it's not necessarily about screaming from the rooftops it's about dropping seeds here and there and keeping your head down to a degree because we've seen what it's happened to those who have screamed it from the rooftops or or just not even screamed it but just been a little bit louder in our society and how quickly the system kills those people yeah bide your time keep your head down but also remember that the final plunge out of that illusion is a big one but I love what you were saying there, Andrew, about taking a note from Truman's book here in terms of the reactions, because again, these are paid actors. And, and what I mean is everybody who's still very much enwrapped in their identity, in their ego, that they don't recognize that that's an illusion, that they are still invested in it as reality, they are very much going to continue to perpetuate and believe in it. 
and they're not going to see anything wrong with that. And so if you lose your shit, because it's going to become difficult for you not to, they're just going to see you as the problem. And that was the thing I enjoyed when Truman was finally at his, his wits end and his wife starts marketing a product to him. And he's just like, who are you talking to? What the fuck is going on? Like, it just seems so irrelevant to everything he's talking about in terms of his real existence. And that's exactly how it feels in the world when you're out and about trying to have a conversation with somebody about being God, about all of us being one, about not being what you think you are. And they're telling you, like, what do you think of my new shoes? Do you like the car I'm driving? And they're telling you who they are and what you should be. And they're playing this game. It's difficult not to go, shut the fuck up. Listen. Let's have an actual conversation, but they're busy playing this illusion that they still think is reality. And we can't shake them out of that any more than they could have shaken us out of that. The only thing we can do is stop being paid actors ourselves. It's all we can do. And in doing that, we give people the opportunity to recognize that not everybody is playing this game. Because that's the thing about in the Truman Show. They were terrified of anybody from the outside world getting in. They were terrified of reality entering the bubble. All you have to do is be reality. And you're in the bubble. Fucking with it. Amen. Um, so something else I wanted to bring up regarding this was, was the whole idea, because this is not something I caught the first time I watched it at all, was that it's it's the first time in history that a corporation has owned a baby. And that whole thing, because that's not really that different from what we're existing within right now, like we all have social security numbers. We all are basically owned by the corporation of the country that we exist within. So it's not very different at all from what we're experiencing right now. And through using the system, through taking part in the system, we are agreeing to being owned by it. And I think a lot of people don't, necessarily recognize the the reality of you know a country just being a big ass corporation so really you know the countries that we exist within kind of like a truman show bubble and once you recognize that again it's not about freaking out going crazy it's just about recognizing it and being reality within the bubble like still playing that role to a point but playing it a lot differently because it's really our perspectives that that change everything about how we experience this reality through letting go of, of the idea of what you think you are. Like, obviously, the system's still fucked, but you're now living for you and you can still enjoy your experience within that. And through being that example of doing so, people are going to take note. They're going to be like, oh, wow, you seem very, very free in yourself. But but the whole idea with the uh, the corporation owning a baby, like it seems crazy, but it isn't that different. And then just, I don't know, the the whole morality of, of the idea of a show being created around someone's life, I found fascinating. And I, as much as I think it's really fucked up, it's also because it's, not so different from the society that we live within. It's not to say that I condone it at all, but it's just not that different from what we're experiencing right now. And so it's, it's almost like, I don't know, the natural progression of, of capitalism in a way where it's like, I could see that being something that happens in our reality and people kind of being like, how much money we we making off of it huh because it's not so different so i just found all of that to be super interesting but especially you know a corporation owning a baby for the first time <laughs> yeah for the first time that's kind of laughable right because at the end of the day that's exactly what the system does and we are very much a vehicle for the system to continue to perpetuate itself. Like if you look up the corporation of the United States, their chief revenue is the taxpayers. Same with every country, every corporation of every country, their chief revenue source is all of the combined income over the lifetimes of their taxpayers. That's what they can leverage as a as an asset. 
right? So it's really not that different. And when you go to court, for example, each and every uh, ruling has a penal sum attached. So it's actually representative of money. It's actually representative of value. It's not just you being handed a sentence. It's actually the exchange of currency under the guise of you being assigned a sentence. So it's very much business as usual. And one thing I thought was interesting, and they did a great job of showing this in this movie, is that the system works very hard to keep us afraid. It, because it understands that when we're afraid of not being enough, of not having enough, of not getting enough, of not being able to do what we want, all of those things, we run in the opposite direction. So we're very easy to steer that way. But Truman stopped focusing on his fears. Truman actually you know, conquered his fear of the water to some degree by crossing the bridge. And so they knew fear couldn't pull him in anymore. He was willing to push it to the, to the edge. And so what did the system do? It sent out his dad. It tried to entice him back with another narrative, one that was deeper to, his, to what he wanted, deeper to his ego and his motivations before the long lost dad that he couldn't connect with, right? Even though it's not really his dad and that relationship isn't true, it was still enticing to go back to that old narrative. Our system does that all the time, except it's in the form of like religion and nationalism. Yeah, I mean, not the least of which being the idea of, you know, oh, careful, you don't believe in God, you might go to hell. It's like, oh, God, that makes me want to throw up. But uh, yeah, the, the whole idea of manipulation throughout this movie was interesting because even with... You know, it made me realize just how how much we're swayed by those around us. You know, like when he's talking to his friend on the overlooking the sunset, he's like, y you've been around, huh? Like, how's that been? I think I want to get out of here. He's like, oh, Truman, nothing beats Sea Haven Island. Nothing beats it. And, and so it, it kind of like, OK, yeah, maybe or or even like just thinking with my friends, if someone isn't sure if a girl's cute or not, and then everyone's like, Oh, she's super cute. She's super cute. All of a sudden, like you think she's more cute. And like, we're just so often so easily manipulated. And so in, in Truman's life, like with, even if he hadn't thought his wife was, was amazing to begin with, if he had his friend in his ear being like, Oh, she's, she's amazing. Like all the guys want or like that shifts his perspective of it and they're actually through this show able to sort of manipulate and mold him not completely they they're not like creating a you know a character on on the sims or on you know nfl video game or something but they're still able to mold him very much to a degree and when you're when your primary source of value is from the perception of other people which so much of ours is we're influenced super easily by those other people, as opposed to letting go of that, that need to be valued or thought of in a certain way. So goes our ability to be manipulated so much. And so we saw that as Truman let go of, of that, even though that wasn't maybe a huge part of, of what it was. It's a huge part of most people is their just their ability, their desire to be liked, their desire to be, to be appreciated and whatnot. And so as he let go of that need for those things, he was way harder to manipulate. He wasn't able to just be told like, Oh, don't, you know, don't worry about that. There's nothing better out there. He's like, yeah, but maybe there is maybe, maybe I don't have to listen to you or, or take your, perspective to be the truth anymore because i have my perspective and i'm curious and i want to find out for myself rather than relying on the opinions of everyone else i think that's a huge part of it you know i think we get to the end of the movie where truman makes the decision that could cost him his life but in that he's already chosen a particular type of death he's already chosen to leave everyone behind he's already chosen to leave everything that truman ever wanted in that town behind even the replacement for his wife, which you notice Kristoff chose very specifically to look like the girl that Truman was in love with. So right there's the manipulation again, but he walked away from his long lost father. He walked away from his mother. He walked away from his best friend, from his job, from his house, from everything he knew in that town and was willing to die for his freedom. 
And that is exactly the energy that this takes to be free in yourself, to break free of your ego, is the willingness to let go of everyone, all of what they think of you, the need for them to think anything about you at all. You have to be willing to let your ego die. And it's going to be scary at first, but it's a choice. And when Truman made that choice, that's when everything changed. And he quite literally hit the edge. Yeah. And and that's really what it comes down to. Like uh, so much of our lives are dictated based on that. And freedom is a letting go of that. And, and it goes fucking deep because it's a letting go of even the perception that there are other people. It's not just the opinions. It's not just the thoughts. It's like, no, there aren't even there aren't even others and something he says in it is it, it's starting to feel like the whole world is revolving around me. And it's funny how in our, in our society that that's taken in so many different ways. It's kind of the, the perspective that we were talking about with Ben again, yesterday, the perspective of having that like egoic God idea or just like being nothing idea. And those are both on the spectrum of your idea of yourself, but through letting go of that, you recognize that, oh, I am reality. And so the world sort of is revolving around me, but not the idea because it's, it's the world is me. And so I'm just revolving around myself and how clearly I recognize that impacts the flow of all of it. And so there's a, there's a lot of deep symbolism throughout this, I think. And, and it's, portrayed in a way that's digestible to our society uh, because we're able to see it as sort of like something separate from the reality we're experiencing. But you know, at the end of the day, the world is revolving around you and how clearly you see that is, is how much sway you're able to have on it. How little you see that dictates how, how little sway and how much you think it's constantly swaying you but you know as you let go of your own preferences of how you think it should be going you realize that it's going and you're it and you're you're sort of moving it as it goes but it's not from the perspective of how you want it to go it's just having that influence over the goingness of it because it is all you at the end of the day it's a really interesting end to this movie because Truman is quite literally the center of this world, but he's the center in that everybody is paying attention to his character. He's not the center of his own world because nothing he does is his own choice. It's all manipulated. It's all influenced. And so he is choosing to stop being the center of this little egotistical world that's based on his character and going out into a world where he will be as anonymous as everyone else but free and therefore the actual main character of his story for the first time. And so I love the conversation towards the end because Kristoff does a great job. Ed Harris does a great job in this movie of acting as basically our ego because he actually says at one point, if Truman really wanted to leave, there's nothing we could do to stop him. And he's so convinced that Truman won't leave because of everything that he's offering. Control, happiness, the opportunity to be the star, the center of attention, all of that. And it's just so interesting because he makes the sales pitch like your character is giving hope and joy to millions of other people. Look how important your character is. But it's not really true. And he's like, you were never had a camera in my head. So you were never really seeing me. You were seeing the piece that you made for your show. It was never me. And so it all comes to a head finally when, again, Kristoff, the ego, says, you're afraid. That's why you can't leave. You belong here. And on that note, Truman has enough. That's what he needed to hear. It's just about being afraid. And he made his choice. I am no longer afraid. Took a bow and said goodbye. And that's just it. As we're, uh, as we no longer fear all the things that 
come with the perception of yourself or the the letting go of that. That's when we're able to finally let it go, finally leave that illusion. But it does take that step. It takes that willingness to step through that door that is just black and you don't know where it's going. You don't know what's on the other side. So the whole the whole movie is the especially the end is very symbolic of letting go of all of the false certainty that you've always had about the idea of yourself that entire life that was built and, and that you thought was so meant so much about you. You always thought that it did and you realize that it didn't. It's like, well, shit, I can't stay here anymore. How could I possibly stay here now that I know that it isn't what I thought it was? And that's when, you know, you, you have the choice. You can stay in that, in that false comfort, false certainty, or you can step through the door and you have no fucking idea where it goes, have no fucking idea what's out there, have no fucking idea what's possible when you step through it. But you know what's here, you know, all of the all of the suffering that comes with this. So you might as well step through the door. On a final note, I have to wonder because there are people in our society, as we've mentioned, who are paid actors, but unwittingly so. It's just everything they know. It's just the mentality that they operate under. But there are other people, as we've kind of alluded to in our Community Topics episode about the Freemasons and other conversations, there are wealth, wealthy families, multi-generational wealthy families that are using this system and using our mentality to their advantage. They know very well in terms of marketing and everything that was done uh, with the propaganda department in the early 1900s with Edward Bernays and all that other fun stuff. They know how to twist our ego. They know how to use it. But what happens when enough of us do what Truman did, which was to keep our head down long enough until we're finally ready to take the plunge and just recognize that we're everything? Will they come out very much as Truman's best friend did in the middle of the live stream, break character and go, shit, he's gone. It makes me wonder. I'm excited to uh, to find out. But yeah, I think. And that just, again, points to the importance of keeping your head down to a degree, having conversation. Absolutely. I mean, we're having it all the time, five days a week, every single week. But outside of that, when when you're in mixed company. It's not to say you don't drop seeds. It's not to say that you don't question things, but it's not about forcing anyone to recognize anything. It's it's just about being free in yourself and continuing to walk through those doors as they open, as the opportunities arise. And eventually, you know, there will be enough of us who have recognized it that we can start making some bigger ripples collectively together. But until then, you know, we got to we got to build that base, as they say. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if they <laughs> they do give a bunch of oh shits, because right now I think they're quite comfortable with the the fear and the desire for control and certainty that our society settles upon, relies upon in order to just feel a, a tiny bit better than we were if once we do start to uh, to question it. Because it's not that we're afraid and we can't leave. It's that we're afraid and that's temporary. So this has been a great episode. I really enjoy The Truman Show each and every time I watch it. It's just a fantastic movie with fantastic performances all around. Thank you so much, Andrew, for checking out this movie with me and doing a review. I know you've seen it before, but it is a gem at the end of the day. And so, dear listener, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Hi, everyone.